Wow. I am quite spooked. I don't know about you guys, but wow, what a scary show. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Shoot Style Sauna's pay-per-view review series. This time, I'm going through the horror show at Extreme Rules. As always, Stell running you through the main roster pay-per-views where we go match by match, give it a star rating, and at the very end, we will award the match of the night, the show MVP, and a nice, lovely letter grade. The horror show at Extreme Rules coming from the Performance Center in Orlando, Florida for WWE. This show met with a lot of interesting build through name changes through this whole horror show theme with bizarre stipulation matches which we, which we will get to as we go along the show but i think without further ado let's get on with it quick disclaimer we are not doing the pre-show as i did not catch the pre-show easy done let's move on in the main show opener, it is the SmackDown Tag Team Championships on the line as The New Day, represented by Kofi and Big E, taking on Swiss Style, as we like to call them, that is Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura. Uh, this match came about as the two teams have been going at it on SmackDown lately. We saw Swiss Style get the better of The New Day in a tag match, and then we also saw them put them through tables recently, and additionally, I believe it was Cesaro that beat Big E on the SmackDown before this show. Yeah, so Swiss Style looking very strong going into this match, and they didn't disappoint. It's a very back-and-forth match early on. Lots of saves from both teams. We see people going for certain double-team moves on the tables. We see a lot of saves. We see pretty much both each guy save their partner from getting put through a table. Pretty simple stuff. It's good. It's good showing of uh, cooperation and the friendships between both teams, how much chemistry they have. Obviously, we know how Biggie, e, oh, not Biggie and Kofi, um, Cesaro and Shinsuke worked together before they were a tag team with Sami Zayn, who was currently on leave for understandable reasons. Uh, some early spots that were notable. I know there was a cool moment where I believe it was going to be a spot where New Day set up, I believe it was Cesaro was on a table, and then Kofi's going for a dive, and then um, Shinsuke saves Cesaro, and they take the table, they lean it upwards, and they throw it into Kofi's face. I thought that was a great spot there. Other than that, more saves. We see Biggie go for his apron spear at another point, but he just misses the table as commentary wants to play that up. And yeah, it's a lot, lots of saves. It's a really nice back and forth match. Very physical stuff too, towards the end. And the finish comes when we see um, Swiss style dispose of Big E with a, with a double team finisher and something we see with Kofi throughout this match is he gets a lot more aggressive as it goes on he's like really aggressive because he's also on his own at this point so he has to do everything he can to help his team win he tries to take out both men he sets up Cesaro on the top thermocle on the top left corner because he has a double stack of tables set up and Shinsuke saves him by just kicking Kofi a couple times and allows Cesaro to set for this top rope powerbomb to the outside through both the tables. Brutal looking spot, but hey, that is enough for the win and our new champions. That's right, new champions in Swiss style, and I thought it was a very fun opener. I'm going to give this match three and a quarter stars out of five. As I said, very physical, very good teamwork displayed from both sides, and new champions. We can't complain about that. After the match, we see Cesaro and Shinsuke walk over the announce table and they talk trash to commentary booth saying that they deserve the recognition now they thought they were overlooked leading up to this match and i can't blame them considering the background of these two teams or well, of, of the two stars on the team apologies and i'm excited to see where this ring goes in your second match, we are sticking with the SmackDown brand that is the SmackDown Women's Champion Bailey defensive title against Nikki Cross. This one coming about, I believe, from some build on SmackDown where Nikki won a number one contenders match against other members of the SmackDown division, and she is pretty much reuniting her feud with Bailey and Sasha because they've had lots of problems before in the past, especially as a tag team. Of course, we saw how Bailey and Sasha beat Nikki and Alexa for the tag belts back in May, and here we are now with a singles match. Before we get started, there's a pre-match speech backstage by Alexa Bliss hyping off both Nikki and the Kabuki Warriors who are there alongside them, saying how they will both be successful tonight and they should, and they feel confident, blah blah blah, good babyface energy, and let's get on to the match. <laughs> Early in this match, it's a lot of feeling each other out, but Nikki quickly gets the advantage on Bailey and hits pretty much a standing version of her finisher, that's called the Purge, it's her swinging net breaker for a quick near fall, commentary get really excited for a second, and but since she continues the onslaught to go to the outside, she hits a spitting DDT on the outside. Uh, it's almost all Nikki starting off, like, you know, she gets that advantage, she, she does doesn't let up, but as they get back in the ring, Bailey slows things back down and has a more methodical approach. She really tries to slow her down because Nikki can be very, very quick. She can be very fast paced and she's eccentric. 
I'm convinced that's kind of her character. But Bailey brings her down to earth. Uh, they fight back to the outside. We see a moment where she gets, and Nikki gets caught in the apron, as, she, as we like to see, as that happens to her a lot. And when the camera pans away from her, we see Bailey, I think, mouthing off of Alexa. And the camera pans back, and Nikki's on the other side of the ring. <laughs> it's like she teleported to the other side of the ring. And Bailey comes over there, and Nikki. They get back in the ring. Nikki mocks the old Bailey with like her like wave into the corner splash thing. It's a very nice moment. And then actually it doesn't stop there. We see Nikki go for a attack at the Bailey to belly. That doesn't really work. And a bank statement, which, you know, doesn't really get her the win. But hey, we see some shade thrown at her. Bailey then responds with her own Bailey to belly. That's only a near fall. And as Nikki takes over the match again, she's hitting move after move, big move, cross bodies, all pretty much horrible arsenal. It's not getting the job done. And you can see her frustration starting to build on her face. And Bailey's slowly starting to fight back into the match. She's running out of ideas. Eventually, we see Bailey run into the turnbuckle in one of the corners. So she falls down. She's not unconscious. She's just dazed for a bit. But this leads to Sasha distracting the referee. And she hands Bailey her boss like ring that she wears on her hand. And Bailey punches Dickie in the gut, hits the rose plant, and one, two, three, and Bailey wins the match by nefarious means. I'm gonna give this match three stars out of five. I think it's one of their better matches that they've had, but eh, nothing special. I did like the babyface energy from Nikki, but a very predictable finish. We all expected Bailey to win this, and you know, passable match, better than what you'd see on SmackDown, but not much else to say. And this is the la not the last time we'll see these two tonight. We are supposed to get the United States Championship match between Apollo Crews and MVP, but um, it is reported on commentary that Apollo is not able to compete tonight due to an injury angle, saying he did not pass his physical for after an attack from Lashley back on Raw the month before. This is coming from Tom Phillips, so this leads to a quick promo segment between Lashley and MVP. They come on, MVP jokes about how Lashley took out Apollo, saying how it wasn't really, he, he went too far taking out Apollo because he wanted to win it like more of a regular way. So so, because of this, MVP says he is the new U.S. champion via forfeit, but however, commentary, they clear up that Apollo Crews is still the champion, so MVP is not the real U.S. champion, so if you're going to compare this to something, he's doing a moose, basically, in Impact right now, where he's going to parade around as the United States champion with the new belt, whereas when Apollo comes back, he'll have, I guess, the stuff of the old belt. And he will be the real U.S. champion. So it's it's a big it's a big moose angle basically, and there's not really much else to the segment. Instead of giving it a star, I'm gonna give it I'm gonna give it a letter grade. We're gonna give it a C. I mean, it continues the story, but it really wasn't much else. Next up, we're sticking with the raw brand, and whoo, everybody, it's time. It is time that we lay our eyes on the I for an I match. Rey Mysterio, with already one bad eye, and it's covered up by, like, I guess it's like Velcro on his mask, I can't tell what it is, taking on Seth Rollins in a match that has had everybody's attention since it was first announced, and boy, they really try with this one. Um, early on in the match, like, really, even in the entrances, we see Rollins come out with his usual entrance, he's all by himself, and he comes, he takes out of his jacket a pair of pliers. Ooh. Oh boy, <laughs> we can already get this idea of what this match is going to be like. Um, Ray sneaks up behind Rollins before the, ma before the match even begins during his entrance, and Ray almost immediately introduces, like, he, I don't know what they called it on commentary, I forget what it was, but it's basically like a steel bar. That's what it is. It's not like a steel pike, because it's a lot thinner, and I'm pretty sure that's one of the ways that he wants to, so, uh, again, uh, it's a lot of, Seth dominates a lot of this match as the heel, but there are hope spots for Ray here and there, so notice what that Seth does, he, he likes to focus on a lot of different weapons we see in this match, we see both men bust out chairs, kendo sticks, screwdrivers even at some point, and later in the match we see Ray break a kendo stick in half, and then he takes like the thinner bits of it that are really sharp, and tries to poke Seth in the eye with it, which is a very gruesome moment, but that doesn't work in the end. Uh, we see Seth really counter a lot of Ray's offense, we see him counter a hurricanrana tip in the corner to a falcon arrow on the apron, ooh, that's painful, there's a lot of really ooh moments in this one. Uh, as you said, Ray has his babyface offense. He slowly starts to fight back into the match. They go to the outside, and they go to the steel steps, as we remember on Raw, when this all first kicked off, when Seth drove Ray's good eye, well, what was his good eye, into the steps. So they go back to there. They go back to that well. I think Seth goes for it originally, but Ray stops him. Ray actually hits a stomp on Seth leading up to this, so he steals his finisher. So, ooh, big bonus points there. Ray been playing a lot of 2K, as we see. 
and he does, he pretty tries to do the spot to Seth. He drives his eye into the steel step corner, but it doesn't work as it eventually is stopped, and Seth, he has, like, some markings on his eye, but he's totally, he's okay in the end. They fight some more. Uh, Seth goes low. When he gets out of it, he kicks Ray into the barricade. It looks like he went low, at least from what I saw. So Ray's a bit out of it. Seth hits him again, Seth hits a stomp, and then I think Seth says something like, you didn't have to end this way, Ray, you didn't have to do this, before he repeats the spot from Raw, basically, and he drives the, the bad eye, because Ray also at this point has revealed the bad eye, it's, it's, like, it's like a white contact lens, basically, that's what it looks like, and he drives that bad eye back into the steps, and that's actually the finish of the match, so, oh, okay. So we basically just did the spot again, just with the bad eye, and now they do a very they they do a very clever thing where they try to like show the eye like coming out of its socket when you get like a really close shot at Ray. For, it's only for a couple seconds. But Seth wins the match and Seth sells this <laughs> Look, man. <laughs> he sells it in a way where he's like I think it's very poorly done. It for my taste. He he throws out like small chunks of vomit. It doesn't really look like great. But he sells it. He's like I, I can't believe what I just did, and Seth kind of just leaves after. He is the winner of the match, as Ray's eye is out of his head, and that show proclaims on commentary. So, yeah, that's the match. I think ring action-wise, it was fairly well, and they did a very good job of what they were given. So I'm going to give it another three and a quarter stars out of five. Like I said, good action. It's just, you know, the finish. It's just a repeat of what we saw on Raw. Like, it wasn't the worst thing ever. It definitely wasn't, but, you know, I think it was very middle of the road, and... They did what they could. I'm not really going to tear it down too much. Start from like the finishes being a raw repeat and then the kind of corny vomit at the end. But hey, I guess that's the end of the feud. We'll see where Seth goes from here. The Golden Roll Bottles are back as we get ready for the other championship match between the two. It is Asuka, the Raw Women's Champion, taking on Sasha Banks, the other half of the Golden Roll Bottles. Before the match, we see Bailey cutting a promo on what happened to Ray. She says how much she's have a fan she was of Ray growing up, but then she takes a jab at Ray after what just happened. And ooh, if there was a crowd, that'd be a lot and lots of feet. Then they make their interest together and we get going. Uh, a lot of feeling each other out. And early on, we see a lot of counters between the two. We see Sasha break out a bank statement early on, but Asuka quickly gets to the bottom ropes, but Sasha retaliates by stopping on her hand before she can really grasp the rope. Asuka then fights back with her own cross arm bar, but then they fade to the outside after Asuka gets a hip attack. Sasha takes control for a good while. Actually, at one point, she does a little bit of joint manipulation. Pete Dunn says hello from Birmingham, and Asuka then gets her way back into the match. They fight into the corner. Sasha is at, at the top turnbuckle, but Asuka retaliates with a magnum. Interesting. I'm going to take note of that for someone who might be showing up later, as in at a later date. Uh, they fight some more. They go back to the outside. We see a big powerbomb by Banks into the plexiglass. Very nice spot there. And this, afterwards, as we get towards the end, this is where things really reach a climax. And, phew. Get trapped in, boys. Uh, Bailey then tries to get involved with the match by getting the tiles in the ring. She throws it in one of the tag belts, but the ref sees this. As this happens, the ref is distracted. Kyrie gets to Asuka, and she has her set up for the green match. I guess she hands her one of the packets for it. So as this is all happening, Asuka's laid down like by the apron, carrying to blind Sasha. As they kind of come back into a like, bit of sanity, Asuka goes for the mist, but Sasha ducks the mist, and the ref gets blinded. So the ref is out of commission now, so we know the ref's dead for the rest of this segment. But it doesn't actually last that much longer. As the ref is out of commission, Bailey sees this and takes advantage. She takes off the ref's shirt. Yes. Um, and from there, she takes one of her tag belts, she nails Asuka in the back with the tag belt, Banks is then going for a cover, and Bailey counts to three, like, it wasn't a fast count either, it, excuse me, was a fair count, from what I saw, and the bell doesn't ring, so, and commentary is, like, disgusted by this, as they aren't very happy, but Bailey demands the bell is rung, and they ring the bell, they rang the bell, as your new, I guess, at time of recording, this is happening like just I think like a half hour after the show ended, it, uh, Sasha Banks is the new Raw Women's Champion. She is now a double champion, as she's been hyping up. And they celebrate together, and that's how we end. Asuka and Kyrie very distraught in the ring. They head to the back, and yeah, that's it. So, what is this going to be? 
This probably would have been closer to three and three quarter stars out of five. It wasn't for that finish. However, because of the very overbooked nature of the finish and the very, very strange ending, you know, wasn't really like cleared up at all. I'm only going to give this three and a quarter stars out of five. It was a good match. I thought there was good ring work. There was some good moments of storytelling and character work between both sides, but it's just when they're ready to get to that next gear, it's really when the climax happened. And that's what really took me out of this match, unfortunately. Like, maybe it'll do a run back on Raw or the weeks to come, and they'll probably get, like, a more of a proper finish to come out of it. But, uh, I'm so sorry, but, like, the match, it's good, but the finish just took me out of it. It just sucks that they couldn't get to that next gear and have, like, probably, like, the ending that we were hoping for with, like, a clean finish. But... Fortunately, yeah, I'm only gonna have to give it that. But all in all, I'm, let's see what happens with the, the angle continues as they're as Oscar. I mean, no, not not Oscar. Uh, Sasha and Bailey are both double champions, at least for now. We'll see what happens on Raw tomorrow. So let's see. In your semi-main event, it is the WWE Championship match between Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler. This matchup has been hyped up for weeks on Raw, with Dolph Ziggler moving over to Raw in the AJ Styles trade. And he went right after Drew, after Drew cut that promo, and it's been hyped up. Like, what's the stipulation going to be? What has Dolph picked out? Is it the Rupert TLC match that was apparently leaked on Facebook? No, it's not. As before the match begins, Dolph gets a microphone and proclaims that the match is an Extreme Rules match. For Dolph Ziggler only, and he also reveals that if Drew either gets counted out or disqualified, Ziggler will still win the championship. I haven't seen the stipulation come out since I think like Unforgiven in 2007 with Triple H and Carlito, I believe. It's been a while since I've seen something like that. That, that one's for a title, but I've seen similar stipulations like that. So... It's very much Ziggler takes advantage of take using various weapons in the match. He uses chair shots. He uses he brings up a table early on. He really just takes advantage. He also, he also can't be counted out because there's no disqualifications for him. Uh, McIntyre has moments where he almost uses the weapons, and as a reminder, if he uses them, he will lose the championship. But he always avoids it. There's a moment where he has off for a vertical suplex at a table to the right of him on the outside, but he go, he sees this and reads it and goes to the left and avoids the table and he yells "Damn it!" at the camera as he almost um, caught himself using the weapon. Uh, they fight more on the outside. Dolph is a famous for off the announce table. A very nice spot there. And we get back into the ring. Drew has taken advantage. He hits a reverse Alabama slam. Shout out to Bob Holly. Um, and then he goes for the claymore, but Dolph sees it coming. He hits him in the leg of a steel chair. Goes for a zigzag. Only a near fall. Nice moment there. Uh, they fight back out where the table was on the outside. Ziggler sets him up on the table. Hits an elbow drop, and then he gets him back into the ring. Ziggler then hits a famouser. Zigzag and Uranagi onto a chair. All in that, that's, that string is all a combo, but Drew still kicks out it too. Very, very good near fall, I should add. And then Dolph yelling, Why won't you die? This yelling at Drew as he won't stay down. He gets in the corner. He tunes up the band for Sweet Chin music, but as he like gets up to his like third or fourth beat, Drew kips up Claymore, and he gets the dub boss man, and that's the match. So Drew, after taking all that beating, he fights back from Dolph. He takes all the offense and absorbs it all, all the punishment, and he's able to pull it out still with one Claymore. Star rating, uh, three stars out of five. I thought it was a very straightforward match. Nothing like too crazy. I think Dolph did good with what he was given, but you know we've seen Dolph come up time and time again to the title scene, and it always just leads to eh, matches. Like I thought this was fine. Like I think it's probably one of the weaker matches of Drew's reign, but like I think they did what they what, what they could. I enjoyed the stipulation, and I think it made sense for the heel. But in the end, I think we all knew Drew was winning this match. Pre predictable outcome, but hey, they tried. And now, let's get to the other cinematic match on this show. It is the highly anticipated swamp fight between Bray Wyatt and the Universal Champion Braun Strowman. As a reminder, this is not for the championship, and it makes sense why, by the end of this why it is not. Uh, before this segment happens on the show, it is hyped up earlier with a pre-match Firefly Funhouse with Bray dressed as Dracula. It has the filter and everything going on. It's a very nice, very well put together video. Uh, he says he's about to see some horrifying footage for the fans and then it cuts to the karaoke segment from Smackdown and then Ray's like whoa 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 wait what's going on here? he yells at Rambling Rabbit to fix it <laughs> and then they just show a high package for him it's actually a very funny moment I thought that was good but when we get to the actual match of the main event it starts off with Braun pulling up in his truck so I want to say bullshit that is not Braun's car we saw what it was back at Backlash it was a lot smaller so I don't know why they decided to change his car here I mean it was destroyed but like insurance like Braun you don't have that Anyway, <laughs> um, so 
Braun pulls up. He sees Bray in a rocking chair, but Bray vanishes. And so Braun's on his own for a little bit. And actually, early on in the match, he actually cuts back to the Firefly Funhouse, and we see a Funhouse Bray cheering on Braun like a cheerleader, which is actually really funny. And as Braun's on his own in the darkness, he demands Bray to show his face. But when he feels impact, he gets he gets whipped to the back by something. And when they pan the camera, it is his Wyatt family counterpart. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so some inception going on here. And so the Black Sheep, we'll call him, we'll call him by the Black Sheep. The black sheep Braun, he I guess he knocks out uh current Braun somehow. I don't know, I forgot how he did it. I think he hit him with like a shovel or something like that. And yeah, not kidding. Braun of the old knocked out the Braun of the new. I am not making this up. This actually happened. Go and watch this match if you have if you haven't, and you're just intrigued by like the fever dream that this becomes. And hey guys, this isn't the craziest thing that happens in the match. Um Braun comes away and they look to be in like a Wyatt compound. I thought that got burned down by Randy Orton in 2017. Oh, Okay. Uh, sure. Spooky. Okay, let's keep going. Um, so we see Braun wake up. He's very confused. He's chained to a rocking chair. And Bray appears to his original theme music. And there's a lot of rambling. Bray wants Braun to join him. He's talking about how they, when they team together, they will rule the world. Basically, things will, governments will fall. People will bow down and they will be on top of it all. Pretty much all the classic old Bray Wyatt promos wrapped in the one. Braun, however, is talking about saying he will destroy him, send him straight to hell pretty like standard stuff from braun but bray just laughs it off and then he asks braun you want to see something really scary good call back to 2013 with that one with his uh vignettes with the wyatt family so then bray brings in this sister abigail like figure with a snake so randy orton metaphor question mark yeah no Anyway, <laughs> so the, the snake bites Braun, and he passes out again. That's the second time Braun's passed out. Uh, Braun comes away. He's, I think he's in the back of the compound at this point, and he fights off some dude to jump around. He sets him on fire. So, yeah, Braun just set a guy on fire, and I'm guessing he's dead? Repercussions? Ray, do you care? I don't know, but let's get back to the weird stuff. As Braun looks around, he hears a voice calling for it's a very feminine voice, and looking out to the dock to the right, we see Alexa Bliss in Sister Abigail gear. Yeah, the fan, fan theories are back, Twitter. Hope you're ready to talk about this more. Uh, it's pretty, it, it, She tells Braun, this figment of his imagination, I'm guessing, telling him to follow her home and saying, this is what you've always wanted, Ron. You want us to be together. And shows these flashbacks of them in the Mix Max Challenge from the two times. I think the team of twice. And shows the footage of them being together and working as a team. It's pretty cool. It's a cool. It's a nice callback to them. But as Braun approaches what, where she was, she's not there anymore by the end of it. Uh, Bray appears and they fight some more. Uh, there's a boat nearby, and Braun eventually disposes Bray into that, and the boat just floats off after that. So when it comes back on camera, Bray's gone. So Braun goes to the water, check on the boat. No one's there. What? Again? And Bray's back. He beats him up and woo! He just drowns Braun. At least if we think he did. Braun eventually emerges from the water on his own. And oh my god, this is just getting this just sounds like a really crazy film from like the 1980s, I feel like at this point. It's like some weird like mesh of like some like comic book. Like I feel like I read it when I was younger and like some creepy ass horror film that's set in the swamp. It's some crazy shit, and we're not done yet. And so Braun recovers, he gets back to the bow, he gets back to like to the dock, he gets to, like this um like a gazebo like area. And we then see Bray attack from behind off a paddle, <laughs> and it looks crazier from there. So then they eventually they calm down for a little bit. Bray gets towards like the fencing or like the edge of the platform, and then he yells at Braun for what he made him do. And Braun simply just pounces Bray off the balcony and he falls into the water. We don't see Bray, and then we see Braun just look into the water. Looks like he's won. And the show graphic appears. I like to call it the Champa signal, but psych, nope. It is not the end. As Bray puts Braun in a mandible claw, he brings Braun into the water. He pretty much chokes him out, and again he drowns him. That's basically what I, that's all I can say about this. And after everything goes goes quiet, we see the water turn red. It's I think it's they're trying to say it's blood basically. And emerging from the water is the fiend. Yep. I, I expected this to come second we saw that, and the show ends with the fiend staring down the camera, laughing, telling us to let him in, and that's how we end. So, by technicality, Bray Wyatt wins, or the fiend wins. I'm, it's Bray Wyatt wins this one. 
So, oh boy, this is gonna get to B minus. I like, I like how it's basically like another. It's it's kind of like the Firefly Funhouse, where it's kind of like a fever dream of Braun Strowman instead of John Cena at this point. But of course, it has like the more original Bray Wyatt take on it with the Fiend at the very end. So this feud's clearly not over because we we need to see what happens. What's left of Braun Strowman on Friday with what they're gonna do here? But it looks to be they're setting up Braun versus the Fiend at SummerSlam, where I imagine the Fiend will win. Uh, I imagine we'll see I mean it was fine I like the content they put in it was a bit wacky at times but like look look who's involved with this match it's Bray Wyatt and it's Braun Strowman two guys have a lot of history together so I'm not really going to moan too much at that I still see where they go from here because they had me at some points but you know it's like a big fever dream it's bizarre if you like crazy shit you'll like this but yeah that's that match and that is the horror show at extreme rules so what am i going to grade this show i'm gonna give it for a final grade a solid c there wasn't really like a standout match to me there there were some parts where there was some overbooking i thought the main event was fine for what it was but it doesn't really hold up to some of the other stuff we've seen from wwe this year especially in terms of cinematic matches yeah if there was a match of the night i'm gonna have to give it to the tables match actually with new day and swiss style because it had a decisive finish it showed off the really great teamwork of both teams and we got a good moment with the new champions being crowned like i can't really moan at that Show MVP, I'm going to give it to the Golden Role Models, just for mainly for their character work and what the implementations have for them beyond this show. Both double champions, at least as of right now. We'll see where we are by the end, by the end of Raw tomorrow. But hey, they were both successful tonight, even though it was by nefarious means. And we'll see where it leads. So, with that in mind, that is my review for the horror show at Extreme Rules. Coming up next on the Shoot Style Sun, I'm sure if it isn't out by this point, we will have the Slammiversary review from Tim. Upcoming episodes of the podcast will be coming the next one at the end of the month before our next one. And be sure to look out for some for, my, uh, for some other class pay, pay per view reviews. I'll be reviewing Evolution in August, and I believe Eric is reviewing ECW One Night Stand 2005. So. That means good to hear about a much better match and one of the best matches ever in Mike Awesome versus Masato Tanaka. So, thank you all for watching, everybody. Be safe, wear a mask, wash your hands, and I'm Stella from the Shoot Style Sauna, and I'll see you next time.